Hi, this is Jared from Shunome, and um, today I wanted to talk about a variety of things. I've recently updated my um, ARCHICAD Shunome Open Template for ARCHICAD 23. Um, real minor change, but I wanted to pick up some odds and ends um, before I kind of decided this version of the template was done and look ahead to start working on the new version of the template as the next version of ARCHICAD should be coming out sometime fairly soon. I'm recording this video in June of 2020. Um, so in this video, I want to go over a some of the minor additions and changes I've done to the template, but then also just talk in general about some other newer techniques that I've been using or some things I've been doing to improve my drawings. Uh, I will put time codes in the description so you can skip around if you don't want to listen to everything. Um, to start, uh, real quick in the project info, I've added two new lines, one for the code website and one for the um, authority having jurisdiction website. Realize I usually do all my work in Seattle, but um, more often now I'm seeing some projects that are outside of my regular area, and I thought it would be nice to embed into the template um, a link to whatever code I'm working on and whatever... Uh, county I need to deal with when I'm doing permitting. So adding those, just thinking ahead. So with template, um, the, most of the things I want to talk about are some improvements to favorites. Um, two things I've added are house numbers and a mailbox. And I'm going to jump over to a project. Uh, so here's the front door of my house. Uh, this is a model I did a couple years ago, but um, the things I want to talk about are here. So um, these are the 3D text uh, element. Usually it's something you don't really think of as putting in a model, but um, we often have 3D text um, in residential construction, mostly house numbers. So I've added those in the template. Um, they're default at six inches, but you know, you change them to whatever you want and put them in there. Um, I think it's the little things like this and the mailbox, which I'll talk about, which really take a model from um, being nice to being uh, really connect with the viewer because it's not just some generic house, it's actually their house. Um, and it's stuff like where a mailbox goes and where the house numbers are that also matter. And if you as the designer or architect don't make that decision, someone else will, and they're probably not going to think about it as carefully as you would. So um, these are in the template now. And then as are uh, this, which is... Um, my preferred kind of mailbox, one that's up against the house rather than out in the street. And all this is, um, is a column that is set to be, you know, these dimensions, it's set the right height off the ground. Um, and when you say this is a favorite, all those dimensions are saved, including the uh, distance from the story level. So you can just click on the favorite, drop it in. Um, and then in ARCHICAD 23 and beyond, you can um, angle the tops and bottoms of columns. So instead of having this just as a oh, other way, 90 degrees, instead of just having that um, flat, you can make it slightly angled just to give it a little nicer effect. Um, you could do this with an object. You could do it um, with other things. What I like about the column uh, rather than an object is that uh, the column has uh, building materials in it, which means that will interact with other elements. So if you want this to cut the siding or cut something else that it's on, as long as the build material of the mailbox column is higher than whatever it's touching, it will cut through it, which is pretty nice. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. Let's talk about stairs. This isn't a change that's in the template, but all, all this stuff is already in there. Um, but however, I wanted to talk about it because this came up in a recent email with an ARCHICAD user about how to do stairs. Uh, I have an old video from, I think, 2012 about how I use complex profiles to do stairs, and I still do that, um, but I'm finding there's others, there's other ways to do it as well. Um, or I'd say I like that method, but sometimes actually using the stair tool is pretty valuable too. Here's an example of that where I have a stair that um, turns a corner, and you know, I don't know if these, um, angled steps are 
100% accurate and what will get built, but I'm not too concerned at this stage of the project, so I'm letting Archicad's wizardry just figure it out for me, and if I need to be more specific later, I will, but I'm not too concerned about that. Um, so I've used the, um, uh, the Archicad stair tool for just the top of the stair. Um, and him building the structure of it separately. I find that this works you know, pretty well. Uh, the nice thing about doing this is if you select the stair and you go edit, you can then um, offset you know, the, uh, the treads so that when you, let's go back to that full view, um, if you want the, the treads to overhang, uh, that's easy to do with the stair tool and still have the risers um, not uh, stick out. So that's one type of stair. Um, and so I'm using that a lot more because uh, I do really like how Archicad um, will you know do all the math for me. Uh, one thing when you're doing that, you can uh, you know have the top tread or you can have the top of the stair either be a tread or a riser. Um, and if you do this as a, a tread, you can change the, you know, manually change how big that is. So you can get the proper nosing of the stair and, you know, have it work with the, the floor. So that's one way to do the stair. Another way I still do it is using the uh, complex profile. I use complex profile beams. Um, so this is a very, for me, very complicated stair with a bunch of split landings and I want everything just so. And you could do this with the Archicad stair tool, but it would be a huge pain because Archicad is trying to be really smart and solve the thing for you, but I don't need Archicad to solve it. I need it to do the thing I've already solved. So I use complex profile uh, beams. One of the great things about complex profile beams now is you can do segmented beams. So this is actually three segments. One, the center has the treads on it, uh, and then the outer ones don't. And so what that allows me to do is have the stair structure continue below the jit board, but the, um, then have the stair surface where I want it and do it all in one element. Um, you know, here's, I didn't, do the um, solid element operation, but here's another example where you know the surface and the underside stop and the structure continues. Uh, it's maybe super finicky, and you know no one outside of the architect is going to notice it. But um, it helps me conceptualize how the stairs actually going together, and helps me understand the detailing. For me, I figure everything out in the model, and then if I need a detail, I draw it. But otherwise. Um, I'm just using good modeling techniques to understand what's going on. Um, so you can see how kind of complicated this gets there. Uh, and this is an example of, you know, you couldn't do this with the stair tool, having the structure come up and then squeeze here and go flat here. Um, it would be such a pain, much easier to do it with um, complex profile uh, beams. So that is stairs. Where am I to next? Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about is skylights. So um, skylights, let's look at these real quick, um, have a lining, which is great. So um, you can line the whole of the roof you're cutting through. Uh, however, that lining becomes less useful when you are building your roofs up of multiple uh, roofs because this lining assumes that your whole roof sandwich is one composite from jitboard to sheathing or even jitboard to um, finished surface. But that's not how I build my roof assemblies. I break them apart into, uh, depending on which roof it is, um, finish insulation, uh, sheathing is definitely separate, and then roof surface, like the finished surface is always separate as well. That way, um, 
you can, this is not a great example because it's an existing conditions model and I did it uh, kind of diagrammatically, but you can have the finished surface overhang the sheathing and you can have the sheathing go to a different length than what's below. So this is again, some poor modeling on my part, doesn't matter, but you know, these should connect, the sheathing goes around the wall, the um, insulated structure stops. Um, by the way, this insulated structure, this inch and a half of um, spray foam insulation with bat insulation and chipboard is a one of two new composites so that um, you can do this. This is pretty standard uh, assembly that I use up here in Seattle for an unvented roof. Anyways, that all aside, when your roof is multiple segments, um, this skylight, I'm just going to delete, delete this, the skylight only the um, only fills the roof element that it's in. It doesn't um, send this, um, what am I blanking on the word here? Um, this lining all the way down. So the solution I found after years of trial and error and different things is the shell, right? The shell is one of these really powerful tools in ArchiCAD that we all forget about and ignore. Um, and I'm now using it for roof holes. It's great because um, with the shell tool, let me see if we can do it really quick here. Um, you pick uh, this geometry method, you draw yourself the rectangle, um, and let's give an extrusion length, and it disappeared on me because that's what ArchiCAD wants to do. Um, Okay, here it is. So here is that shell uh, we just made. Um, and now you can, um, shell's a little finicky, so I'm not gonna do it in real time because um, I don't use them enough, but you can rotate them. Um, and so you can angle it to be exactly, you know, here we can do this. You know, you rotate, rotate that shell, so you draw it flat, then you rotate it into place, you can, um, stretch it and do all the things you need to do to get it perfectly in line. Um, it, it's based on composites, so you can get the right um, thicknesses and everything. Uh, and it's just, it's a fantastic way to ring a, um, an opening for a skylight. If I jump back to uh, this other project, uh, here I have a better example um, where the skylight opening is vertical sides, but it still slopes up. And so with a shell, you can do that. You can get all the sides to be vertical, but move it so that without solid, solid element operations, anything, um, you're ringing the inside of an opening for a skylight with chipboard. Um, so really pleased with how that works. Now we're already at 13 minutes, so I'm gonna wrap this up with a discussion of one more thing, and that's interior elevations. Um, so, here we are. I have recently started going overboard in what I show in interior elevations uh, because much like I was talking at the beginning of this video with the mailbox and the house numbers, uh, if we don't make these decisions or at least thinking about them, someone else will, and oftentimes without discussing with us. So I have started um, in all my interior, elevation, interior elevations trying to show as many things as can be. This also helps with creating finished schedules later on, which can be the topic of another video. So, you know, light switches, those are easy. That's in the template. Um, this, the uh, controls for a heated floor, love heated floors in bathrooms and showing them pretty much standard. And so again, in my template, this is all saved and uh, I've just basically found a, um, an outlet that looks like a button. It's not, perfect for what an actual control would look like for a heated floor, but it's beyond good enough. Um, the other things here, we've got a towel bar and we've got a toilet paper holder. The toilet paper holder is probably the most ridiculous thing to show, but at the same time, it's in every bathroom. It needs to be purchased. It needs to be in a finished schedule. It needs to be located. Um, so here it is. It is um, a railing. And so um, it's just a railing with an end on one side 
um, and one attachment. Same thing with the towel bar. It's railing with no ends and two attachments. If we just run through here, um, you know, it's great. There it is. Um, I saved the favorite. It shows up at however high off the ground, so it's very easy to just plop it in every drawing. Um, same thing with sconces. That's not the final sconce, but it's, it's good enough. Um, this mirror is just the picture object. Again, these are all in the template. Um, it's uh, just the picture object, and then as part of the template, I have a mirror JPEG. So if you look at this in 3D, it gives the effect of a mirror. Um, showing outlets, and what else do I want to show in here? Towel bar. These are the GDL objects I've talked about previously that I uh, created. They look so much better than the out of the box um, options. And uh, so this last bit, um, that's just a thin wall that is um, tile and grout, or tile and um, yeah, so it, so that you can just run that everywhere. And again, much like the baseboard here, it's a favorite. You run around, it's all good. It's done fast. Um, that is, let me just show you this view in 3D if I can find it real quick, and then I will wrap up this video. Um, I don't have that bathroom done, but I'll show you. Uh, where are we? Here we are. So here's here's the master bath in that, in this same house. So some cool exposed structure. It's a remodel of a 1960s house. It was such a dream to get to work on it. Um, but here's the railings as towel bars, um, the mirror, the picture is a mirror. Those are my objects. Uh, it's been great for visualization for the client. It makes for really nice looking to elevations. Um, so that's all I've got for today. Thank you for putting up the long video. Um, I hope you learn something and again everything I'm showing in here uh, all the pieces are in the template so anything you want to be able to do yourself is just is waiting for you so thank you very much